Hello everybody, be welcome to my video channels, Vitor Por Deus. And we are here to present today a, a very important memory of the actions of our work here in Brazil, which was this international seminar, the arts and mental health, that we held with Sesc at São Paulo at the Sesc Belenzinho branch. And this happened in March 21st, 22nd, and 23rd in, in Sao Paulo. And it was organized by Sesc, and I helped in the organization and the curatory of the content. And uh, this brought together very important people that are already missing, like Professor Danilo Miranda, who uh, was, uh, was the president of the Sesc organization, who is like a charity for, for the workers of commerce and services in Brazil. And he uh, passed away, and he, he leaded this uh, institution for more than 30 years, and, and he became very respected and famous in Brazil about being a very competent public, uh, culture, uh, culture policy maker. And he was uh, with us in this opening. There are two special guests, that one came from Canada and the other came from Jamaica, were uh, Professor Jaswin Gusder, who is a physician, an artist, and a transcultural psychiatrist, a family therapist, psychoanalyst from uh, Montreal in Canada. She teaches in the Division of Social and Transcultural Psychiatry of, of, of McGill University. And also uh, the uh, doctor in clinical psychology, uh, Debbie Ann Chambers, who uh, is a continuator of the work of Frederick Hickling in Jamaica, who was an example of public policy and mental health promotion through the arts. And uh, also in the same Sesc Belenzinho was this incredible happening, uh, which was the exhibition, the art show and exhibition of the archive of Nisa da Silveira, who was the most successful uh, transcultural psychiatrist one of the most successful therapists, one of the most successful psychiatrists of Brazil was this woman that worked in Rio de Janeiro. She passed away in 1999 and she developed a huge collection of uh, art paintings that were in exhibition in this place in Sao Paulo, in the same place where we organized the seminar. And here you can see the, the artworks of the patients of Dr. Nisa da Silveira who are, who are also example of mental health promotion through the arts. Uh, and this is the founding style of this discipline in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. And that's what we want to continue and to develop and to expand in order to advance mental health promotion in public health and public policies. Here, so you have Debbie Ann Chambers, who is this uh, Jamaican who is a leading uh, f a figure and a researcher and worker in, because she pioneers and she pioneered the work of Fred Hickling with him. She helped to develop in Jamaica, working in communities in the, in the uh, uh, Dream a World project and, and in, the, in, the, in, the, in the schools and Debbie Ann holds a PhD from uh, New York uh, and she returned to Jamaica to work in her own community. Uh, the group, a very special group, uh, Jason Gus, and also from Sao Paulo, Regiane Mendes, who is a great researcher and, and a person that uh, works with the story of Osório Tomatugo Cesar, who is also the pioneer of transcultural psychiatry through the arts in Sao Paulo. Dr. Vitor Nina, who presently is a, a health officer in primary care, in the second biggest city of the Amazon, Belém do Pará. And he's doing incredible work with public policy and transcultural public policy and the use of the arts in, in, in mental health promotion of a very vulnerable population like street populations. So we are, we are not disputing anything. We are displaying positive experiences. We are displaying uh, ways of working in medicine and psychiatry and, 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 and mental health and public mental health that work are very good, have good results and wonderful people that can exemplify how to proceed and how to implement this in different uh, communities and families and 
uh, uh, services and magical services and, and community services. The work of Fred Hickling is very important because he makes the transition in more than 40 years of clinical experience, working from the asylum, in working in the community, working in the schools, working in international environment, working in New Zealand, working in England, working in, 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 in Scotland. And, and he has developed this Freirian, Paulo Freire pedagogy in psychiatry, and develop a whole method and a whole set of methodologies involving uh, circles of culture and problematization and thematization and, and the elaboration of stories and histories and memories and amnesias and psychohistoriographies. And this uh, represents a practical experience of a highly colonized people like the Jamaicans that may serve as a mirror to our own people, the Brazilians. And we may understand and have insights about the uh, psychopathology of colonization, the colonization of, of our communities by uh, uh, European psychosis, and the way to treat it through drama, through culture, through images, is also uh, have been discussed by Jasmine, who is a physician, she's a polymath, a very wise woman, she understands a very, uh, she's an artist and a painter and she's a therapist and she treats people and she's not afraid of working with, with patients and uh, as diseases because a lot of people in this field, they pose as big anthropologists and knowers of the human soul, but uh, when, when it's to do clinical work, the clinical work is always abandoned and then neglected and this is not the case with this very special group of physicians and, and clinical psychologists who are people that work with patients and, and have been developing work with patients like Hickling, like Silvera, and also like Jasmine herself and Debbie Ann and myself, I do. I live in the last five years in Rio de Janeiro after I returned from Canada fully from my patients and my families and I do full clinical work and seeing family therapy and theater and doing clean, uh, street theater. So our service is working in a, in a full capacity after five years right now. And this seminar was like a coronation of all this construction and uh, uh, ideological fight for uh, more humane psychiatry and a richer medicine, a medicine that may be richer in uh, uh, symbols and semiology and arts and, and understanding and, and deciphering the symptoms and deciphering the, sim the symbols of the patients. And this is very important and I think that Jason Guzder is an example of this kind of competence and clinical competence and she worked in several parts of the world, in Nepal, in India, in Jamaica, in Canada, several parts. She works with indigenous people. She has been doing uh, a lot of family therapy in Montreal took care of hundreds of families and constructed the child psychiatry uh, oriented uh, uh, to, through, through Family Psychotherapy uh, Institute of the Jewish General Hospital connected to McGill. She teaches in the Division of Social Transcultural Psychiatry for ages. And she has a kilometrical uh, experience like Nisa da Silveira. And she also brings the same sensitivity and the same vision of working through the arts and through the symbols. She is also an Jungian and a Freudian. Another very important stellar uh, person is Professor Lula van der Ley, who was a personal disciple of Nisa da Silveira and also a personal disciple of uh, Ligia Clark, who was, was one of the greatest contemporary artists of Brazil, who stated that there is no art object, but a relational objects. There is no art, but relations. Every art is relational, because it's con constructed in context, in, in exchange of meaning, and in, in exchange of images, and sensations, and meeting, and encounter. And Lula van der Ley, in the last 40 years, has devoted himself to develop a clinical work in the uh, Engenho de Dentro hospital in the asylum where Nisida Silveira worked. And he developed a cultural clinic 
that uh, treats schizophrenics and chronic psychotic, very severe clinical pictures through Elijah Clark's relational objects. And it's a very genial experience that he published two books. One book is called The Dragon Landed in the Space, Psychic Suffering and the Relational Object of Lisa Clark. And the second book is in Portuguese, of course. And the second book is The Silence That the Words Hold, that has been just recently launched. And he describes clinical cases and experiences using the relational objects and the proposals of Ligia Clark and the relational experiences to explore a psych a psychological content and psychotic content in his work with uh, very successful cases. And when I worked in the hospital of Ingenio de Dentro during seven years, uh, Professor Lula was one of the key partners of the Madness Hotel experience and he we would share all the cases and he would tell me about the people that were working together with us in the theater, in the hotel. And, and, and Lula should be a model for uh, public health and for public mental health in Brazil, although he's very poorly understood by our own community and he's very neglected by uh, public health authorities that do a very conservative drug-based uh, public policy that contradicts our own experience and the experience of our community and the experience of Lula Vanderlei now in Rio de Janeiro. Another very important Brazilian physician that was invited as a special guest in December was Professor Vera Dantas, who is an indigenous woman from Canaúba dos Dantas in the Rio Grande do Norte state of Brazil, the first woman and the first person to become a physician in her own city and she became one of the key people in uh, constructive approaches for mental health promotion since she's a, uh, a leading researcher in the Paulo Freire Pedagogy for Health. She founded several spaces. She founded the Ecobé space in, in Fortaleza with her group who also, she has key collaborators in this work of cultural action for freedom and then Seno Poetry with Ray Lima and also uh, the theater exchange uh, movement in the countryside of the northeast of Brazil with uh, Junior Santos and Josi Dantas and, and many other groups that are uh, doing a living culture that can uh, uh, help to increase in, uh, the mental health promotion of people in communities. Dr. Vera Dantas She's a family physician. She works in the public system in, in Fortaleza, in the northeast of Brazil. And she also founded the Madness Hotel. And I also think she should be a model. She should be our minister of health to lead by example. And this is our incredible dream team of transcultural psychiatry and mental health promotion that includes a new youngling from the new generation, Vitor Nina, the great master Lula van der Leyen, the great and the masters one, the wonderful masters Vera Dantas, Debbie and Chambers from Jamaica, representing the Jamaican experience, and Jason Gusde from uh, from Canada. We also had the incredible experiences of uh, Regiane Mendes, who is a researcher and a, a, a researcher and a pedagogist from São Paulo, who presented her wisdom about Osório Cesar who was the pioneer and teacher of Nisa da Silveira in Sao Paulo with art-based uh, psychiatry and transcultural psychiatry. <coughs> and also the participation of the psychologist André Nader, who is also a researcher in the fields of uh, art and psychiatry. And Lula van der Leyen, who uh, gave us incredible speeches. He, he spoke in, the, in this seminar. I don't want to bring art into psychiatry but I want to practice psychiatry as a poetic place, as a way of creation, as a way of artistic enlightenment. Psychiatry as artistic enlightenment. Not bringing didactic programs of art into psychiatry, but to understand the profound subjective nature of medicine and psychiatry. And that's what Lula has been doing in Brazil for 40 years, and we were able to show this practical experience in Sao Paulo. Also, the amazing participation of the great artist 
and psychoanalyst uh, and writer, Katia Canton, who brings this uh, quotation of Freud. He says, the poets and the philosophers found out the unconscious before me. What I found out was a scientific method that allows us to study the unconscious. The artist precedes the psychoanalysts. It all comes together. Also, the psychiatrist and the street psychiatrist working with the street population, Carmen Santana, who is from Sao Paulo, and we were colleagues in McGill, and Carmen is doing very sensitive clinical work in the Sao Paulo University and in the Paulista School of Medicine, and also in the care to street populations in Sao Paulo, and it's very important. And also, uh, Vitor Nina, who is the health officer for primary care, a family physician and transcultural psychiatrist, doing innovative uh, transcultural methods in the public policy in, in Belém do Pará, uh, with a lot of important uh, uh, achievements. And our uh, Vera Dantas, who is this leading physician. And we have this incredible group that were gathered, that we keep working here in Brazil, in the community. You have amazing people like Jason Gunther in this picture, Eli Diana Alexandrino, uh, we are holding hands with uh, Debian Chambers, Fabio Ariston, Regiane Mendes, Rafael Costa, Rafael Bacchitti, uh, uh, Gabriel Damasceno, uh, Fabiane Valmor, and many other people who are s still fighting to sustain the clinical work to complete all the party and complete all this process, we were able still to bring Dr. Gusder and Dr. Chambers to visit the incredible archive of the Museum of Images of the Unconscious in, in Engenho de Dento, in Rio de Janeiro. We gathered younger people, older people, we gathered the work of Nisa da Silveira, we gathered this idea of transcultural practices for clinical work, for mental health promotion, for family therapy, for community therapy. And Jasmine closed the event answering, uh, uh, answering questions from the audience uh, with Joseph Campbell's advice, which is follow your joy. To sum up, uh, transcultural psychiatry through the arts is follow your joy and follow your intuition. And this is very aligned with uh, Nisa da Silveira and many other important authors of uh, world psychiatry and uh, transcultural psychiatry and the arts and psychiatry. And Nisa da Silveira still has this phrase when she says, I'm not a philanthropic lady, no way. I am a person who has curiosity about the abyss. Although I have consciousness that the abyss is so deep that I pass through its borders. So I thought about using the activities as a way of expression of the problem, internal problematic of the sick people. So the, this work with the arts in Nisa da Silveira, in Jason Gusder, in Lula van der Leyen, it's a deeply committed work to the people and to the patients and to the subjective world of, of the people and the culture and the arts of the people identity of the people, dialoguing. So this is very, this has to be made clearer in this moment. Uh, unless we keep treating Nisa da Silveira as an item of museum. And that's not what we do. I also take part with Dr. Gusder in the uh, art and healing course in the social and transcultural psychiatry which is a full week program on art and psychiatry, theater and mental health, uh, the work and uh, poetry with Dr. Lawrence Kiermaier, uh, painting and images with Dr. Gila Hirsch, uh, dance and psychiatry, the theater and psychiatry. I, I do the work, I do the lecture and, and, do, and the dialoguing with the students. And, and there is workshop. So it's a very way, a nice way to continue uh, with uh, more continuous work, regular work, that uh, keeps a calendar, and, and we keep doing this, and we look for more partners and more people and more institutions that want to invest on transcultural psychiatry through the arts and mental health promotion through the arts, 
that is really working and I think it should be a trend in the 21st century for mental health promotion and answering these pandemics that we are facing on mental health. Uh, this is uh, also a homage to the, the great courage of, of, of Sigmund Freud and, and also the great pioneering work of Charcot, who, who was a professor of Freud and also was an artist. And I think now, after the last play we played here in Dionysus Theater, is, uh, Charcot is the great pioneer in the arts-based neuropsychiatry. And he was a great artist and a painter and an actor and improvisator. And he developed amazing work in, uh, in the Hospice de la Salpetriere in, in Paris. And there is this incredible biography about uh, Jean-Martin Charcot by uh, Jonathan Marshall called Performing Neurology. And I highly advise to read about this book about who is interested in the art and psychiatry and the role of theater in medicine and neuropsychiatry and how, and how all that is interconnected in a deep sense that uh, may bring a new understanding about medicine and clinical work and psychiatry. And, and, and there is a new way of thinking in biology that is aligned with that. And, and, and this is the last picture and I think this is a great group of people that involve patients and masters and scientists and physicians and psychologists and actors and artists and poets and, and all them from Brazil and from Charcot, from Breuer, from Freud, from Hippocrates, from Jung, from Giuliano Moreira. It's a way of thinking that we have different uh, confirmations from different times and from different places that show the, the indestructible role of creativity in human health and how healing and therapeutic processes uh, are really connected to creativity and recreation and creation of the person and the self. And this is uh, what we are uh, uh, struggling to work in a very mentally ill society that uh, doesn't explore the role of creativity, but the role of submission and massification and homogenization. And, and this is, seem, seems to be a very important axis for our work to propose creativity and, and, and the, the, the use of creative forces in every community and every family to face the daily life challenges. And we are envisioning this in the last decades through our work and through the work of our masters. The idea of art-based transcultural mental health promotion, art-based transcultural magical education, art-based transcultural public policies of health. We are showing that we are doing it in the present and we have many experiences doing it in the present. We have shown that we have also many experiences in the past who are revolutionary, important and structuring, but we keep asking, are we going to work this in the future? The future will be more healthy. The future will have more mental health. The future will have more cultural creativity. This is the question and what are communities waiting for? Thank you very much. Here you can find all my papers, publish it. You can check all the papers and read it and reproduce our work with clinical mental health promotion through the arts and theater and music and dance and public performance and public occupations and public spectacles. And you can test in your own community and your own family. And, and I'm sure if you do it with a calmness, with method, with regularity, with uh, observation, with clinical follow-up, with anamnesis, with dialoguing, I'm sure it will, will reproduce. Thank you very much and be welcome to our contents in the internet.